Hi, I'm Sabin Yakov. This presentation is entitled Plotting Nyquist Plots and Stability Margin in SPICE. Let me start off with just a general description of a feedback system. We have the plan here, we have the feedback, this is the summing junction, and of course the closed loop response from input to output will be this open loop section and then beta A plus one. And this product here is of course defined as the loop gain. This is the loop gain. Now there's one point I like to make clear, which is a source of confusion sometime. And it will be important when plotting the curves. And that is that this expression with this plus is already taking into account this minus here. Okay, so that the real gain from here up to here includes a phase reversal because this is a negative feedback system. But in this expression, we have already taken this into account. So this beta A open loop is at say low frequency without phase shift is a positive number while in reality it is a negative number because it is a negative feedback. So this is very important to remember. Now in real systems like hardware system, like a converter, it's a DC, DC converter, it's a boost converter, we can measure the loop gain by putting a, injecting in series a voltage here in the feedback loop here and measuring the ratio between this voltage and this voltage and this is actually the loop gain. Again, here we're going to get the real gain in with its sign, this will be negative sign when without phase shift, so that if you like to have the loop gain by this definition, you have to put the minus sign here. It's very important. Now I'm not going into the issue of stability. I'm just going to talk about how to plot these curves. Now this is a Nyquist plot. What we see here, this is the plot of the, of the curve of the loop gain. This is the magnitude of the loop gain and this is the phase of the loop gain. So we have the two components actually in this vector here. So this would be for positive frequencies starting from zero to infinity and this is for the negative frequencies. I've also plotted here the unit is circle because this point is of course very important if this plot is then circling the minus one then the system is unstable and also uh, we define this phase margin between the penetration of this curve through the unit is circle here we define this angle as the phase margin which we'd like to keep it say more than say 30, 40 degrees, otherwise the system will be sort of a jumpy oscillatory and we would like to avoid it. So this plot, as I've said, it starts from zero, goes to infinity, minus infinity, and this penetration port is really important because uh, it explains the transfer of this curve to the border plot. Border plots are actually another representation of this same information that is given here, just in another way of doing it. And here it is. Here we, the information is broken into two parts. This is the gain. So this will be the vector. And this is the phase. So here this is the phase. So we have the gain and the phase. Now this line here, the 0 dB, is in fact the place where the gain is one. So this is actually the unit circle. So this is where we actually here penetrate the unit circle. Here it is, we penetrate the unit circle. And therefore the phase here or the difference between the real phase and 180 degrees is the phase margin. And this is actually the definition of the phase margin. We can also define a gain margin. Gain margin means that uh, what is the gain that you need in order to bring this curve to cross the zero dB line. So here's 100 degrees and the question is 
how much gain do you need here in order to bring this curve to this point at which the phase is 180 degrees. It has been my experience that the uh, phase margin is uh, more important because uh, what we are worried about usually is the phase shift in the system and the question of gain is not that much because uh, the gains are due to the controller. Controller has pretty much a fixed gain, doesn't change much. And also the system, obviously it might have different gains, but you have already taking it uh, into account. And here is a typical bullet plot. We have the gain here, we have the phase here, Normally, we are plotting this in a log scale. This is a log scale. And also, we are showing the gain in dB because the gains are high, and otherwise, uh, it will be a problem with the scale. This sort of compressing it, and this is the normal way of uh, plotting it. And then we have the phase. And of course, if we look now at the zero dB here uh, of the gain, uh, this will be then the phase margin. So this is a very typical bother plot. So the question is, now you have this, and you like to have the Nyquist, which is nice to have. Doing it manually is rather complex, but uh, as I'll show you in a while, uh, it is really simple, uh, like within the SPICE or any other uh, environment that uh, you are working at. It has been claimed it's difficult, but it's really very simple. Well, first of all, we need one window, of course, and then we're going to change this axis, we're going to change it because we don't want it to be frequency. And here is how we do it. We double click here or click here and this window, uh, this is piece five now, okay? So this window opens. Uh, we also would like to change the lock to linear because we are passing through zero and a lock scale is a very complex. I mean, it can't handle zero, of course. So we change it to linear, the scale, and then we click on this axis variable and this window opens. Now it is frequency because it's a bother plot. We don't want it frequency. We want it to be the real of the loop gain. V out for me in this particular uh, run is actually the loop gain. So we want it to be the read of the loop gain. Notice I've put here a minus for the reason that I've already said, uh, to be consistent with the definition of loop gain, etc., etc. So I want the axis to be the real of the loop gain, minus because of the sign. Here it is. So this has been changed now, so this is not the real of the loop gain, but uh, this is now in the log scale from the DB, so I'm going to click on it and change it to linear. And then, of course, I like this value to be the imaginary part of the loop gain, because the y-axis in the Nyquist is the imaginary part. So this is the imaginary part of the loop gain. Again, there's a minus here, and here it is. So this is the Nyquist plot. Now, it's uh, a little bit uh, unfamiliar, perhaps, because first of all, uh, the gain is high, so we really don't see the minus one point. It's just of hiding here. I'll zoom on it a little bit later. Also, I see here half of the plot, because uh, we are plotting, of course, positive frequencies. But since the um, other half is a mirror image of this one, all that I have to do is to add here imaginary, but without the minus, okay? This is with original with the minus, without, and here it is. So this is the complete Nyquist. This is the positive frequencies, negative frequencies, and now we have the problem that we don't see anything, the minus one, because this is the scale, it goes to 1000. So I'm going to zoom on it, and here it is. So this is the very classical uh, Nyquist plot. We see here the minus one point, this is here. The scale now is minus two to plus two, and uh, same thing here. This is now the real part. This is the imaginary part. Uh, this is the positive frequency, negative frequency, and the uh, unity circle. Well, it's not exactly a circle because of the 
they the uh, un I mean dimension of of the axis here. Uh, if it would be one to one in terms of the length, then it'll be a circle. So here it is. Uh, very simple. We got the Nyquist. We have all that we need. Obviously, this will be the phase, although it's easier on the border plot to see, of course, the phase margin rather than here. here you have to measure it in the border plot. You border plot, you see it immediately. Now, there's another term here which has been defined, which is called the stability margin. And uh, this is the distance between the loop gain curve and the minus one point. Well, the idea is that uh, you how close you are to the danger zone, let's call it this way. I don't know how important is this parameter, but anyhow, it has been defined and it is being used. So the question is now, okay, this is this distance. Of course, uh, the worst case is when this distance is the shortest. And the question is, how can we get it? Well, I don't want to take a ruler and, and you know, with looking up the millimeter distance here. So let's see what this thing actually means. And here we have the loop gain, and we are here at this point. This point has some coordinates to it. It is an imaginary coordinate and a real coordinate, okay? This is the coordinates of this point. And then we have the coordinates of this point. This is minus one and zero, okay? Now, we want the length of this thing, okay? So we use Pythagoras and take this distance here, or this length squared, and this length squared, and the square root of it will be this distance, okay? Here it is. This is the imaginary part. This is part squared. This distance, is because this is minus, then this is minus minus, it becomes one. So this is the real of the loop gain plus one squared, and the square root of it is indeed the uh, this length of this vector, which is the stability margin. So how do we do it? Well, first of all, I'm changing back to frequency because I like to have this plot in the uh, axis of frequency, x axis to be frequency, the function of frequency. And then I just define this variable. This is the square root of the imaginary part squared, so I sort of multiplied it by itself, and then the real part plus one times the same thing to get it squared, and that's, there's a square root uh, function here too. Uh, I got it from here, from the list, and that's it. So here we have it. This is the original border plot. This is the magnitude. This is the phase. And this is the stability margin. And you see that at this point, when we are uh, close to uh, zero dB, um, we have this minimum value. This is this vector here. This is this point, this is a vector here. And here is, um, it's about 0.6 or 0.7. This is this, this length here, okay? This is one, so it makes sense. Like this be like 0.6. Let me just point out that although I'm showing it in a spice or piece spice as a matter of fact, the same calculation is very simple can be and plotting can be done in MATLAB, Excel and any other say simulation pro circuit simulation program. So this brings me to the end of this uh, presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it interesting and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.